This is a video in chemistry topic 2. This video will focus on nanoparticles which are found in triple science only. So what exactly are nanoparticles? Well nanoparticles are incredibly small particles. We live in the macro world. We can think of things like metres. Below metres you should have come across millimetres which are a thousandth of the size of a metre. A thousand times smaller again, we find micrometers. If we go even smaller again, dividing again by another thousand meters, we get to nanometers. One nanometer is equal to 0 0.000000001 meters. All nanoparticles have a diameter between 1 nanometer, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and 100 nanometers, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. These are particles that contain only a few hundred atoms, so they are incredibly small. Slightly larger than nanoparticles, we have fine particles, with a value of PM 2.5. These particles have a diameter between 100 nanometers, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, and 2,500 nanometers, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Larger again, we have coarse particles with a value of PM10. These have a diameter between 2,500 nanometers, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and 10,000 nanometers, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. We also know these particles as dust. The surface area to volume ratio plays a huge impact in the way that a particle behaves. This is found out by the equation surface area to volume ratio equals surface area divided by volume. As particles decrease in size, the size of their surface area dramatically increases in relation to their volume. This causes the surface area to volume ratio to increase. This is particularly important in rates of reaction where an increased surface area will speed up the rate of reaction. Nanoparticles have a very high surface area to volume ratio. This means that the surface area is very large compared to the volume of the nanoparticle. This can cause the properties of a material to be different depending on whether it's a nanoparticle or whether it's in bulk. For example, you'll often need less of a material that's made up of nanoparticles to work as an effective catalyst compared to a material made up of normal sized particles. This is because the surface area to volume ratio is so high. So what can nanoparticles be used for? Well, in the modern world, nanoparticles are being used more and more as nanoscience starts to take off. As we saw on the previous page, because of their very high surface area to volume ratio, they can make very useful catalysts. As some nanoparticles conduct electricity, they can be used in computer chips in order to make computer chips smaller. Certain nanoparticles, for example silver nanoparticles, have antibacterial properties. They can be added to polymer fibres in order to make surgical masks and wound dressings. They can also be added to deodorants. A hot topic at the moment is the use of nanoparticles in cosmetics. They have been used heavily in moisturisers as they prevent them from feeling oily. However, there have been talks to decrease the number of nanoparticles in a large number of cosmetics. Another use is they can be used in nanomedicine. This is where tiny particles, such as the fullerenes, as we looked at in bonding, which are absorbed easily by the body, this means that they can deliver drugs right to where they are needed. In the exam, it's important to remember that they can ask you about other potential properties. However, you'll be given any additional information that you need in order to answer the question. Finally, we need to think about the effects of nanoparticles. As nanoparticles are a very new part of science, their full effect on human health aren't fully understood. Therefore, it's important that all new products are tested thoroughly to minimise the risks. Although we know a lot of short-term risks, we do not know the long-term impacts that they can have. 
This means that any products containing nanoparticles need to be clearly labelled. Where they are often found are in things like sun creams, where the nanoparticles are good at protecting the skin from harmful UV rays. They give better skin coverage than traditional sun creams, but we're not sure what damage it may have on skin cells in later life. This means when you are talking about nanoparticles in the exam, it is important that you give both the positives and the potential negatives of using them.